Hello everyone and welcome back to the Pit Stop at Home where we review season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Today, I have with us the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race season six and everyone's favorite hormone monster, it's Bianca Del Rio. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that I was the queen of New York, but isn't that British bull? <laughs> Yeah, the crown's been taken, apparently. The throne is gone. It has moved to Maine for the quarantine, this thing. Now, you are in uh, Palm Springs, living I it up. I am. I am. You know, the weird thing is, you know, I'm out here, and people think, oh, you're in Palm Springs because of the weather. No, I moved here because everybody's old, and it actually makes me look young for once. So I'm chicken, <laughs> bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you're a twink again. <laughs> <laughs> So here's the gag. Girl, season 12, these girls have watched almost the entire season from quarantine, which honestly, I can't even imagine. You and I both know you do drag race and you start traveling almost immediately. These bitches just been sitting at home the whole time. You know, I gotta say, I'm most impressed by the initiative and the effort people have been putting into their at-home shows. I sit back and marvel at everything that they're doing out of their house. So I've gotta give them points for being creative and oh, doing yeah. the best they can. It, I, I like personally looking at the odd things, like behind them, the one wall, the piece of curtain that didn't cover. Yeah. You see the dog going in and out the dog door. Oh, I yeah. love all that. I love all that. So it gives me a peek as to see how dirty people live. It's kind of like watching hoarders. <laughs> well, it don't is. turn the cameras around. Cause you, you don't realize, listen, I've been moving, I've just been shifting my furniture from each side of the house. I, I feel like I live in a real life version of Animal Crossing like a living room with no furniture and all the furniture is pushed to the corners. Feng shui, feng shui, bitch. You're releasing spirits. So there is a theory online that all the seasons that are even numbered, you know, six, season eight, are like uh -huh. the best seasons. What do you think about that? Well, I think it varies. You know, I used to get in arguments, or in the beginning, you know what it's like, that you find yourself enthralled in all the madness involved and you kind of feel that your duty to respond to everybody. But over the years, now what, 12 seasons? This is wild. To Girl, think that's so crazy. 12 seasons. Yeah, it's kind of like whoever likes this for that reason, likes it for that reason. Although we know everybody hates season seven for obvious reasons, but it is fascinating <laughs> is that, you know, it really depends on who they're rooting for and who they're liking and who they get. So I say, look, God bless them all. The fact that we're all still working from home is lovely. After your season, they started doing these like lip sync numbers. They had to like lip sync either against each other or perform a whole piece at the end. How do you think you would have fared against Adora and Courtney in a lip sync for the crown? Well, I'm not a lip sync queen. As you know, when we worked together years ago, it was never my thing. There was people that would do it far better than I could. So I don't think I would have survived had it been the case. But I often tell people, there was even someone online who said, Bianca Del Rio is not even a real drag queen because she doesn't lip sync. And I thought, at the time, the point of the show is to not in lip sync, you asshole, yeah, to true. sail through the competition, as my good friend Vanilla LaCran said, you need to <laughs> sail through the competition. The point was not to lip sync, but I do respect the people that do. I don't think I would do well. I really, really don't. So we start off by looking at the girls doing all their finale looks. They're doing them from home. Here's a question. Did you have any favorite looks out of all of these? Uh, well, I, got, I love Crystal. There's just something I love about Crystal. I don't know, maybe it's because she's endearing and, and likable, but whatever she does, I'm like, yeah, that's good. And you know that I, that I do love people that have lots of personality and bad hair choices. Adore Delano. But she, I thought was, I thought she was the loveliest. The best part I love is that all that sequin and glamour in the backyard. <laughs> yes. Because back, back in my day, it was called a yard gig, bitch. <laughs> I did everything from weddings, bar mitzvahs to funerals, any gig. I did drag barbecue, drag bingo, did it all. Girl, I wanted to go, Crystal. We have a message from your Tia Bianca, and then have you show us. <laughs> That Jaden is absolutely gorgeous. She's 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 what I uh. think I look like in the mirror. So when you people are at home going, God, Bianca looks like shit. in my mind, I'm Jaden. Girl, that's part of the fantasy. You have to believe that you look way better than you do. For me, a Michael Clark Duncan sized motherfucker to get dressed up in drag, and in my mind, I'm like, I really look like Viola Davis. I <laughs> nailed it. But in truth, I look I look like an X Man. <laughs> Oh, I love your confidence. I see it in your posts. 
Uh, I want to tell you, my favorite look, I actually really love out of all the looks, and this is going to, the fans are going to gag. They're going to be like, yeah. girl, I can't believe Bob's saying this. Aiden Zane looked amazing. She looked good. She looked good. Listen, I, I can only imagine what's going through their mind. Most of them, nothing. But the rest of them, it's got to be kind of <laughs> crazy. So to come up with this, to have the confidence to go out there and stand in your backyard and go, this is what I am. When I watch it, I realize to myself, there, every, you know this, you lived in New York City for over a decade. There are yeah. three New York City apartments. There is the long hallway, there is the big studio space, Yes. And then there is the railroad side apartment. The thing about New York apartments, there ain't no good light. Ain't no good light no matter where you go. I lived in an apartment in Uptown that said room with a view. View of a brick wall, bitch. Couldn't see Girl. a goddamn thing. I thought I was looking in a mirror. Just a big old stack of bricks. <laughs> it was like... Well, I saw your apartment back before you moved to LA. It was that we, I came up one time. You talked about a glue wig down, and I walked yeah. in. And it was the like the, the little vanity area, and then yeah. a little closet, and then then the bed where the magic yeah. was, where the tragic happens. <laughs> Shut up, bitch! Nobody's <laughs> lived to tell those stories. <laughs> <laughs> also, how about the guest judges from this season? Nicki Minaj, uh, Leslie Jones, Whoopi Goldberg, Jeff Goldblum. I mean. Whoopi Goldberg, I scream. Like, Whoopi, your favorite. I mean, do you agree these are some of the best judges the show has ever had? We don't deserve Whoopi Goldberg. The worst was Rachel Bloom came in and did so good in the political challenge when I was like, damn, Rachel Bloom is the winner of this week's challenge. Damn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's dig into the top three. So let's start with Crystal. What do you think about Crystal, like as a queen in general? Well, I just love anybody who has a, a, a different approach to it. I think uh, all through the years of Drag Race, as I was saying to you before, how the show has changed, it's grown, and look at the judges they have. I mean, it's, it's bigger than ever, winning Emmys and winning trophies. That yeah. it's so refreshing to see somebody that kind of comes in on their own, makes their own clothes, does their own mix, it has a kooky sense. You know, it's that Tammy Brown aesthetic. What I love about it is because to me, that's what drag was. It wasn't having a designer create 19 looks for you and to go into debt and to mortgage your house so you can win a title. That to me is what drag is. So I just love her and just charming personality. I, I do, there's just something charismatic about her. And you and me both know that like that kind of drag that Crystal does, when you had a drag show and there's one of those girls on the cast, that's yep. the one that everyone goes crazy for. I always say the best thing about a drag show is to have different types, to have the dancer, have the singer, have the kooky one, have the comedian, because everyone's not just gonna like you, you know? And you're yeah. only as good as the company you keep. So I, I think she's lovely. And of course there's Rue's obsession with Elle DeBarge. I mean, honey, this mullet is the real winner of the season of season 12. That is the look, that is, a, I gotta say this, you know, Rue loves her because it makes Rue think about his youth which is long ago. <laughs> but I gotta say though, uh, no, it's funny. It's like they say everything old is new again. So I'm waiting for my big chance. <laughs> so Gigi Good has entered this really elite sorority of queens who have won four challenges their season. Shea kool who didn't win Drag Race, Sharon Needles, who's certifiably insane, and Gigi Good, who is a hopeful for this season. Um, that, do you think that she's like cocky? Is it confident? Is it too much? Because we're both, we were both very confident in our season. Yeah, I think it's just about approach. I think maybe people might take it a little differently when you're young. People might take it differently when you're thin. People take it differently when you're white. But I think, I think, I think that she is talented. You know, so there's no denying. And you know, we know what it's like. It's a, it's a hard game to play. And everybody who sits at home, I know there's not enough people that say it, is that it's like, oh, I, I would do this, I would do that. I think she's done amazingly well. And the fact that her mom sews a lot of that stuff for her, I think her mother should do Drag Race. Now that would right? be fierce. That bitch right? can make an outfit in no time. We love that. <laughs> I think that's genius. No, I think, I, I wouldn't say, um, you know, that it comes across as cognitive. I think that she's been well supported by her mother. And I think that that's a good thing. You know, it's, yeah. it's a rarity in the drag world. I think you're right. I think people are just kind of turned off by the fact that she is, again, skinny, white, thin, yeah. 21 years old. And let's talk about the essence of beauty, Miss Jada Essence Hall. Bitch. I mean. I don't, I don't think we even have to say anything. We just go, bitch. Yeah, she I mean, really does look like that. That's how that's how you look. You better work. You just look like that, don't you? Work, Mr. Well, you just, like, like, like that's half the battle. I mean, here I am with my clown 
face and my big dreams, just drawing on the face that she possessed. I think I have that face till I see a picture. You know how it is. She's gorgeous, she's talented. I think she's got a great sense of humor, you know? And and mm-hmm. come on, I mean, it's such a diverse top three that that's what makes it so compelling. Because you could really pick any of them for different reasons, you know? Her essence is very like Suge Avery in the color purple. Like the yes. gorgeous one who just rolls into town and steals your man, and I'm silly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then who the f does that make me, bitch? You're the white woman uh, who tried to Miss get Miss Millie! Oprah like that. Miss Millie! <laughs> You're the mayor's wife. I don't. All right, here's my screen test. I don't know her either. Okay. Uh... <laughs> I think the fact that Jada made it this far in the competition has maybe broken that stigma about pageant queens and RuPaul's Drag Race. I agree. Well, I think that, you know, when you're a pageant queen, you you learn the basics and you learn that you've got to represent yourself. You've got to make mm-hmm. something out of nothing. you got to throw everything in a suitcase, go to another city and pray that you win a title. So Literally. I think that she did it really f-ing well, you know, and I think doing pageants is, is great training to get you there. I never did any pageant, although I did win first place in a dog show. But the thing oh, is, nice. do... congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bitch. You were the runner up. But I think what. Uh, Bianca, Bianca's uh, breed was uh, talking shit to. Oh, that was. <laughs> Come on. Oh, that is good. <laughs> I am a. To- and now in the talking shih tzu category. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about for a second, like, just. And you and I both know, because we worked with her, how beautiful that tribute was to Jacqueline who's uh, one of the producers of RuPaul's Drag Race, like, oh. Yeah. It was pretty amazing. Um, And you know, I was lucky enough to have Jacqueline as my story producer, my season. And you know, uh, my particular season, I had gone through quite a few of them and she was my last few weeks of the show. And what I loved about her on day one, she told me, she goes, we are not gonna be friends. We will never be friends. We are working together. And when this is over, I do not want a Facebook friend request from you (laughs) at all. So I was like, who is this bitch? And then in the midst of it, we got along so well. And honestly, you know, you know how it is when you're trapped in that room and you're having to talk to people. It's kind of like this, is that she was able to pull out of you what you thought, what opinions were, and kind of guide you through it never never changing what i said and we had the best time and i left there thinking wow what a what a cool fabulous lady but i thought she's never gonna talk to me again yeah literally a week being home she sent me a facebook friend request and that was it she's been I in my house that. for christmas hanging out you know how it is she hung out with us it, she was just a lovely wonderful kind person and i can't say that about many people yeah the i mean best. she was just the best, the best. I'm, I'm the cast of season 12 they are so lucky that they got a chance yeah. to sit down across from Jacqueline in that hot ass room they turn yeah. the air off yes <laughs> to, with Sarge on the camera yeah. yeah and oh my god it was so great to see Dolly Parton up on our screens even if just for a second yes Dolly f- Parton bitch that it look done no discussion Dolly mother f- and she put on the good wig you saw that that hair oh, was extra girl, she got, oh Dolly got in full drag for this. But also I love Dolly's itty bitty self on that in the shades lounge being swallowed up. I was like, girl, you better work. Bitch, Dolly was living her life and you know she had Jolene inside that wig. It was just <laughs> I, I also like she read Drag Race. She was like, I'm so bored, I agreed to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly, Dolly's a good bitch, girl. Dolly's yeah. a good bitch. A big congratulations to season 12, Miss Congeniality, Heidi in Closet. I wish that her acceptance speech, I wish she had taken her trophy and said, F- you, f- you, f- you, f- you. Yes. <laughs> no, I mean, listen, I love a bitch who can whistle without even trying. I mean, girl. she is... She is fabulous and lovely. And what I love about her, I think once again, it just goes back to she's a genuine person. She's Mm. not manufactured. She she doesn't act like she knows everything. She tells you what she thinks and feels. And it it basically, she carried me through the series and I went, you know what? I like this bitch. I I adore her. She's she's brilliant, lovely, and it's so genuine, which is rare. So let's talk about these lip sync performers. We get five of them tonight. Okay, the first one is a close up. It's like, it's like a TikTok. It's where, where they all lean in. It's a, it's a, it's a FaceTime call. What it was kind of it was kind of like well, uh, you know when you call your mom on FaceTime and she's in the angles kind of like this. And she's like, "Hey, baby, 
I love ah, you. Ah, ah. What's amazing is that it's so, it, we're living in this completely different world. You know, the fact that now it's literally head on, lip sync. So the theatricality is in their faces. And I say, once again, and I never give compliments, never to you, but I say kudos to the girls. You know, you're up in front, this is it. Usually we're on a big stage and there's like 19 oh, yeah. cameras flying by that you don't realize that they're on your f***ing face. What can you do that's magical that'll get people interested? My first thought was I would just never want a camera that close to my face. There was one where I was like, Jada, mama, pull the chin back. Don't be giving them the, the this. <laughs> Give them the yeah. this, but don't take it by It's true. It, it's it's the it's the angles, girl. You gotta get the good angle. But I, you know, like I said, I I I look at them and go, wow, so glad I didn't have to experience that. Like being that up close right? is pretty f***ing scary. So for the next lip sync, the girls get to like design their own performances. So uh, Crystal Method does I'm Like a Bird, Nelly Furtado. What did you think of this yeah. performance? I thought it was entertaining and I thought, you know what? That to me is what drag is. I could see that in a club. I could see that as production value. She thought about it. She had oh, costumes, yeah. the way it was edited. I say, it was nothing fancy. It was just entertaining. I loved it and rare, you know? It's very Sesame yeah. Street on acid. They're regurgitating yeah. the singing duet, singing backup with herself. It was really clever. Oh, my only critique was it was a little bit one note. Like a little one note. Besides that, girl, I mean. Well, listen, aside. I don't know anything about one note coming from wearing the same dress every episode and every color. <laughs> I I don't know what you mean. <laughs> and what do I know about repeating fabrics? I, I, would, I would never. I would <laughs> Bitch, literally never do that. you repeat fabrics, I repeat the same dress. <laughs> and still one. So Gigi does Take On Me by Aha. Aha. Um, it was it was pretty cute, actually. What did you think? She's got great ideas and wonderful references. You know, I thought it was fun. And it's a song that most people probably don't know that was sung by a group called Aha. Uh, and it was one of the first digital shorts of yeah. MTV time. I'm old enough to know that. So I thought it was a, I thought it was a great reference. I loved it. I thought she put some time into it. I love the mirror moment, the little hand against the mirror with herself yes. drawn on. That was really cute and clever. You know what would have really gagged me though? Cause for a second I thought to myself, what if she was actually, cause we saw her setting it up, but what if she was on a green screen and then the thing started moving around her? That would have Now you see, now that, mm, I'm gonna take off points for the dismount. Now Jada Essence Hall performs Sierra in her tiny little apartment on her couch, on her floor, against the wall. Um, so what, what do you think of it? This was very much like a performance you see at a club. Like I was, she was like, if you come see me in real life, this is what you're gonna see in real life. But baby, it's like, you know, it's like performing at a New York club. Girl, they call that a stage. Do what yeah. you got to fucking do. That's true. New York, anyone who's ever performed at Barracuda knows how to perform on a milk crate. Honestly. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. You know, I thought I thought she did a great, she was, if you could be a video hoe in a two by two square, you get my vote, bitch. You get my vote. Um, I will say, at one point I was kind of thinking to myself, like, I think you could have given it a little bit more. You could do anything you want. You can literally do anything, you know what I mean? Well, I think that in that, it, this is what defines the difference between all three, is that some are visual, some are creative, and some are just live performers. Yeah. And when we're now living in this digital age, it may not translate as it would in person. Do you know what I, do you know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah, for sure, like, if, if When you're in person, you know from working in New York, we've worked in those clubs where the background, the wall, you know, uh, you don't even know what you're dealing with, but you're just turning the party. So I think yeah. in the elements it was different. It probably didn't translate as well as it would live. I agree. So out of the three uh, where they get to make their own performances, who do you think won that round? I, 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 it's hard because they, each three stand alone differently They're so as different. a performer. That's, you know, and I love variety. So I, I you know, in my heart of hearts, and, and it, if I just base it on performance, I would say all of them. It's hard. It's hard. It because is they're all tough. good for different reasons, you know? And that's the crazy thing is that in each given time, if I could look back at the season and say, oh, well, I liked it because of this, or I like that, or I like that, or I didn't like this. But overall, I thought their performances were everything what I want to see when I go see a drag show. Yeah. So I think all three of them are up there, and I really can't. And choose. I just can't. I don't envy the judges. No. 
But out of the three of them, honestly, in the second round, I would probably choose Crystal. If each one of these yep. was a video on YouTube, the one okay, that then, I would click but, the wait. most would be Crystal's. But listen to what you just said. If this was a video on it. So I think, now that you've kind of clarified it, she understood the assignment, which makes sense, which is kind of like the game of Drag Race. It's not so much about being the fiercest, most fabulous, the best dancer, the best singer. It's listen to the assignment and her assignment was create the lip sync at home and you know what so you've definitely turned me into yep i go for her i would say crystal yes most imaginative most creative and she listened to the assignment so now we move on to the final lip sync they've all been passed through all three plot uh drag race rules have been officially suspended that's RuPaul's favorite thing well i think i think what they need to they need to stop saying the rules have changed. The bottom line, there ain't no f***ing rules. There ain't no rules. And what I love the most is to see the people online going, well, that can't happen because of this and because of this and because of that. There ain't no damn rules. They're making yeah, a TV do show. Want. Do whatever you f***ing want, and I fully support that shit. That's what I True. say. So now they're doing the final lip sync. RuPaul has sent them all packages where they are all set up the exact same. Everyone's got like a uh, Mylar, uh, Mylar streamer wall. Yep. With yep. some balloons. It's party. Yes. Uh, Sharon Needles would be happy. It was very party city. <laughs> it was. It was. And you know what? How many clubs have I performed in? And that was the fing setup, Girl. bitch. Real Girl. Tea. You can count on a curtain, but you can't count on an audience. <laughs> <laughs> so Gigi Good does this. And I, I have, I will say, I have seen it done before, but it doesn't make it less impressive. This black and white grayscale Dorothy to Technicolor yep. Dorothy. Um, I don't know that it went with the number. Well, I think it was a little more, I think it was a little more tricks and fantasy. And listen, you know I'm old enough. I remember seeing Wizard of Oz when it came out and I... <laughs> <laughs> you knew the dead sea when it was just getting sick. <laughs> when it was the sick sea, Jada is like wearing this, it looks like an orange is the new black fashion. Then Crystal is, uh, I don't feel like this is a song that Crystal would have ever, ever chosen by herself. No. No. But she did a good job. Like, she really no. kept up. And she has honestly stayed so true to herself while being able to elevate her drag. Like, yeah. when you look at her from when she first started to, like, now, she's so heightened, but she's still, it's just, like, a better, it's a crystal to one up. Well, the game is, the, the game is to, I mean, it, it sounds so crazy when you're wearing a wig. Go to be who you are. But also, listen to what is going on, because they're taking you on a journey. And if you allow yourself to be in the moment and go, hey, I signed up for this show. There's a group of people telling me, maybe you should try this. Try it. You have nothing to yeah. lose. So, here it is. Spoiler alert. I don't want to hear no shade. We're celebrating. Let me tell you, my favorite thing you ever said, Bianca, when you said, bitch, let us celebrate. When you when people were talking about spoiler, you were like, bitch, we celebrating today, f y'all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, congratulations to the winner of season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race. A big shout out to Miss Jada Essence Hall. Yes. My twin, my twin <laughs> in my parallel universe. Jada, I think I look like you. Glamorous and beautiful. You did a great job, bitch, and spoke it as a true pageant, bitch. You know, Miss Alyssa Edwards says, it was clean, it was concise, and it was consistent. I can't do a tongue pop. Yeah. No, you were brilliant. And, and kudos to you for getting through the comp. It's not easy. You did it with style. You did it with grace. Congratulations, my love. And welcome to the winner's circle. I, I don't want to be. She did it with style. She did it with grace. And she had yeah. a beautiful face. That girl is everything. Everything we want to be. <sighs> exactly. <laughs> so from me and Bianca, welcome, Jada, to the, to the winner's circle. <laughs> From two ugly bitches, congratulations, you pretty <laughs> asshole. Like you not already running out life. <laughs> One of us will be hosting the show you're headlining. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real thing. Bianca, thank you so much for joining us. Honestly, don't tell the other girls, you were my favorite out of all the guys <laughs> I've had. Don't well, you know what, Monet. Bob? You know what, Bob? I'm going to say, we go way back, and I adore you dearly. And don't tell anyone, but I hate you. Uh, no, and I gotta say, from the bottom of my nasty little heart, I gotta say this, congratulations on all your success. Kudos to you, I'm so proud to see everything you're doing. And finally, you took my makeup suggestions by wearing a fucking mask that hides it. <laughs> finally, bitch, finally! You look Listen soft! To your elders. And thank <laughs> you so much for joining us this entire season. I know the world is crazy right now. You all stuck in. The views did not go down. That has not gone unnoticed by me 
Thank you so, so much for joining us. This is when I would normally say join us next week, but I won't be here. So good luck to whoever's hosting All Stars because this was a great season of Pit Stop. Yay! Thank you at home for watching and making this one of the most viewed seasons of the Pit Stops. I gotta be honest, it has made me so emotional, baby. It was worth it. Was it? Do you want everything RuPaul's Drag Race at your fingertips? Then head over to YouTube now and subscribe to the RuPaul's Drag Race channel and you will get all the episodes of everything you ever want, including brand new episodes of Whatcha Packin'. Hi.